Hello and welcome back to another episode of Media Mantras. I'm Matthew. And I'm Adrian. And uh, we got some news, Big Apple. We got some uh, Deadpool 3 news. We got some Blade news. We have some trailers to look at. Some stuff that I'm a little behind the curve on. But we've been busy, man. Life, life happens. It's all good. Yep. Um, we got some Rick and Morty. <laughs> speaking of behind. <laughs> some, some Season 6, Episode 2 and 3 review. Because why not? And yeah, then yeah. finally a Knives Out uh, review. Finally got around to seeing that. I just right past me. Just didn't watch it. Didn't <laughs> make time for it. But yeah. we're getting to it now. It's all good. All right. Bro, I, I took a screenshot of this freaking Vanity Fair headline. Johnny Depp, Amber Heard defamation trial movie to stream on Fox's Tubi. A movie, dude. The trial Man. just wrapped up like a couple months ago. Yeah. Do we need a movie? Like, wasn't the show itself entertaining, the actual trial? <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I, don't I saw know. all kinds of like social media posts about it and like highlights and, yeah. and like compilations and stuff like that. So and so gets owned, her lawyer, her lawyer gets owned by this, this one, I don't know, witness. Bro, there's no way. They, they cast everybody. I'm like, there's, this, this is crazy. Uh, so you're going to watch it? I mean, maybe. It depends, it depends on how it looks. Yeah, I feel that. I wonder yeah. if... I'm, I'm surprised that they're not doing a show, but I guess it's not far enough out. Like the Who, OJ Who's show. this other guy in the picture? That's who's supposed to be playing Johnny Depp, I think. Oh, they already have a, a like cast? Like, they have a cast. Yeah. A full cast? Well, they have the two leads, the ones that matter. Huh. <laughs> no, look here. Uh, the film stars Mark Hapka. From Parallels and Days of Our Lives as Depp and Megan Davis from Alone in the Dark as Heard. It's set to premiere <laughs> Friday, September 30th. Dude, this thing's already got a release date. Wow. That is a quick turnaround. On um, Fox's Tubi. Tubi? What is that? I, I guess is that a, a streaming service. Oh, it's a streaming service? Yeah, it's Fox's Tubi, man. You never heard oh. of Fox's Tubi? No. Everybody's signed up. They have like half a billion subscribers, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Nah, I'm just fucking. And um, so, yeah, that's <laughs> premiering in like a month um wow that's kind of bananas wow um yeah it follows their tumultuous relationship in and out of court dramatizing the two-month defamation that concluded on june 1st that is a quick turn turnaround for any kind of movie i'm sorry that is that is quick yeah like, Who, who's directed uh let's see directed by sarah L- loman from secrets in the woods hmm wow look what they got to pay a, a play amber heard that's the that's that actress um let's see megan davis Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you put a wig and get get some blonde on her. Sure, yeah, I see it. Whatever, close enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you think in in this kind of situation they would try to go for like accurate looks, dude? That's a I quick turnaround. I think this is the best That'd they could be do hard, on right? such a short notice. Yeah, a short notice. And what I want to know is like, when did they start pre productioning this? Like, when did they know that they were doing this? Who has the rights to this? Who's making money off of this? <laughs> well, apparently Fox. Well, for sure, but like. Like in some, oh, some regard. Here we go. Know. Look, I have some answers for you. The film, the film is executive produced by Brittany Clemens. Don't know who that is. Angie Day, Marianne C. Wunsch, Hannah Pilmer, and Fernando Swoos. Swoos. Uh, under Ninth House Banner. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, unless some of those people work for Fox or, I mean, Hurt or um, Depp. I, I don't know how they benefit from this. Yeah, I don't know. That brings, that brings to point a, a larger question. Like, I mean, should some things be sacred? You know, Dahmer just came out on Netflix, right? Yeah. And I read a, I read a, a thread somewhere on Reddit that the, one of the victims saw it and <clears> saw <throat> an actress who looked just like her and heard, mm. heard her repeat the words she said in court and like, you know, go through all, and it brought up like a flood of emotions and she wasn't contacted about it. She's just like, bam, there's a movie about what happened to you. Dang. Deal with it, chump. I just, yeah. it's, it's an interesting thing to think about. It's like, whoa, how many, how many, how many of these court cases should we keep sacred? Or should we monetize for people's entertainment? I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Um, you want to go to your news real quick? Um, yeah. So uh, Hugh Jackman is going to be in Deadpool 3. Damn straight he is, which is surprising to me. Yeah. How many times are you going to hang up the cake, man? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or the claws in this case. But hey, man, it's Ryan Reynolds. No, no, no. I understand. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not happy about it. I'm happy about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't think... Uh, I didn't think uh, the stars would align like that. You know, he's getting up there in age and he's doing other stuff and he's pursuing other pursuits. But you think it has to do with Marvel? Because he, he's wanted to be in Marvel for a minute, like, like in the MCU. I think rather than I think it has to have something to do with it, because if, yeah. you, if you if you if you aren't completely oblivious to reality, you know that Fox's X-Men has had a very mixed bag in terms of like critical acclaim and like how well received those movies are. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're not all hits. And I, maybe he thinks that they can bring another dimension here now that he's actually in the Marvel sandbox, you know, right. finally. So right. I think Marvel coming back, that whole sandbox, the money that's involved, I'm sure, 
and the fact that he gets to play off his best friend. I'm sure. I mean, they're very close, obviously. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a really compelling reason to, to put the claws back on one more time. You feel me? Yeah. You feel me, Big Apple? Yeah, I mean, why not, right? Why not, man? Why not? But What do you think they're going to do? That's what I, I don't know. They, you saw that second teaser when they were like, Right, yeah. Yeah, they cut off the words and they're like doing all these motions. Yeah. Um, they'll probably fight for like all of a scene just for the sake of having it happen and then they'll team up and do whatever. I what I want to know is how how Wolverine the character is gonna react to how fourth wall breaking Deadpool is and like him being right, giddy yeah. about this finally happening and him having to play dumb and not know, like not be in on the joke, you know? Mm -hmm. Not really. And is he gonna be all disgruntled and grumpy? You know, they kinda of talked briefly about the timeline. He's like, it's not gonna be old man Logan, obviously, right? Yeah. I don't know. They have a lot of questions to answer. And maybe they just won't. Just be like, yeah, deal with it. And just roll with it. <laughs> I have no idea right? what the plot's going to be. No clue. But I don't know. How much crossover do you think we're going to see? Because it's going to be heavily mutant. It has to be. So first time we're going to see mutants. Right. Well, it's coming well, out no, in 2024. Not, not the first so. time we see mutants. But in a large way, maybe. Like, this could be a large showcase. This, this will be the first time in the movies. Cause right. Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel at the end, right. First int introduced, yeah. Sure, sure. But yeah, this is going to be a large um, opening for that aspect of the universe, for sure. Yeah. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. It's going to, it'll be here quicker than we think, maybe. Is it end of 2024? Did they say? It was like. Uh, it was 9, 6, 20. Okay, so yeah. That probably means they're going to start shooting at the beginning or towards the end of 2023. Yeah. Got it. All right. Well, I'm hyped for that, man. I'm hyped for that. Uh, hey, hold on. One last thing before we leave that. He said yeah. one more time. Do you think it's going to be one more time? Or do you think he'll come back for Secret Wars again in a small little part? I mean, there's rumors that he, that he will be. but So I guess there's potential. Because um, also that it's um, possible for Toby. To be oh, of course. Well. Yeah, so, they left it intentionally vague for that reason, too. Yeah. And he can so, always come back. You know? I'm sure Marvel would be interested in doing that sort of thing. They just got to come to an agreement. Yeah. Contractually, for sure. Who knows? Who knows about these secret deals? But they're doing all right. I know that's for sure. Uh, talk to me about this Blade news real quick. Oh, yeah. So um, Blade, which is supposed to come out next year, right? I believe so. Yeah. I'll double check yeah. that while you spread and, the word. And also, it's supposed to start production in two, in two months. Mm -hmm. uh, it lost its director, it, uh, Bassam Tariq. Yeah, November 3rd of next year. They're shooting pretty quick here if it's coming out in November. Yep. And they just lost their director. Any and, reason why? Uh, I think they said scheduling issues. Hmm. I think that's corporate talk for uh, yeah. creative disagreements. That's probably what it is. <laughs> Something, maybe. Scheduling issues? I you mean, don't know to, what you're doing? to mismanage this, this Something scene? of that caliber? Yeah. yeah. Or, this late yeah. in the game? Or, yeah, game? this late. Like, close yeah, to yeah. it? Yeah, no, that's, that's corporate jargon for we didn't see the eye to eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's that quote you have right there? Yeah, it also... Um, who is this? Um... um yeah, no, I didn't. I don't know that. who said this quote, but read it off. <laughs> Fire that shit, man. No, no, no. Let me let me see who this was. Okay, I gotta okay. context. All right, bam. Yeah, yeah, it was Jeff Snyder of the Anklers. Um, he he had said, or he had reported that uh, the current Blade script is roughly ninety pages long, mm -hmm. and features exactly two lackluster action sequences. Oof. Mahershala Ali said that. Uh, to be very frustrated with the process, and Feige said to be uh, spread too thin. Um, but hey, that's just what sources are telling me. Don't shoot the messenger. I didn't. <laughs> got put that in there. So, yeah, I know. It's important. You have to include the last part. Yeah. You know, I 110% I believe that because, dude, Feige's name's everywhere, and I get it. He spent a lot of work on the back end, you know, like bringing everything to light and creating this universe as we know it. Yeah. His name's on everything. And like, you mean to tell me he's like in the, in the nitty gritty of all these productions, but I well, I'm, I'm sure he, he used to be. Yes. Like used early to be. on, but in this made, phase, doing like three projects every couple of years. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Not so much anymore. I mean, he can give maybe like 2% of his time to each little project that isn't like a movie movie. Even the movies are suffering, even blade suffering, you know what I mean? As a result. Mm -hmm. So I, I totally believe that like, he's got a bunch of little camps going and, some are running amok and it's just like, you know, he's not there to be in the weeds every day with everybody, you know, holding everybody's hands. Yeah. That is yeah. interesting. Um, I totally believe he's spread too thin. And so uh, I wonder what they're going to do. Cause they're probably going to have to push it back. They're going to have to, if it's this much of a mess, and especially mm -hmm. if the lead isn't happy with it. You know what I mean? It's just like, 
you yeah. want to keep your leads around. You want to keep them around and happy. I mean, yeah, they're contractually obligated, but he probably, they probably have them locked in for four or five movies at least, right? You know, between the Avengers, and they probably want to do a couple of Blades, if not a trilogy, right? Why not? Mm-hmm. And if he's not happy with the first movie, I mean, yeah, they're gonna have to you have to pull some freaking strings around there. Maybe you think how do you, how likely do you think is that it is that they're gonna push it back, like fifty fifty, or I, they keep an eye on it? I don't know. I mean. It depends on if they could, like, how quick they can get a director. Because, mm. and if the director would be willing to work with the script that they have, or if they need to rewrite it. Because oh, if they want to rewrite it, yeah, that's gonna take which some time. Sounds, sounds like, like they, they want they, to. They're gonna need to. Uh, yeah, so, it's gonna be a couple months minimum. You yeah, really get probably, it where you want it. They're probably gonna push it back. Probably. All right, we'll yeah. see you in 2025, Blade. <laughs> <laughs> that's rough. Yikes. Um, damn. That's all the news I got. You want to take a small break and get into the trailers? Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Um, I know you see everything the minute it comes out, but I haven't seen <laughs> Secret Invasion yet because I wanted to save myself for you, Big A. Oh, right, yeah. And so well, here, two weeks later, I'm finally getting around to it. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> and what is that, Big A? Guess we're going to have to find out. I guess we're going to have to find out. Streaming 2023. <laughs> um, should we move on to Babylon? Yeah, let's do it, my big man. <laughs> Dude, God, this movie looks in- intense. Yeah, and, it, looks, and just it looks insane. Off the wall. <laughs> wow. Uh, if I'm if nothing else, I'm intrigued. This film looks like crazy. It's I don't know. It's yeah, it looks fun. Dude, Toby McGuire. He's in things again. Yeah. He's in things again. <laughs> Dude, why does he always find himself in that really like that that crazy 2030s aesthetic? You get great Gatsby, you got this. I feel like I've seen oh, him yeah. at least one other thing like that. Like he's always he's always 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 back there. At least maybe what, the biggest. What era thing. was um that chess movie yeah. that he was in? I get, psh, let me look it up because that feels pretty ancient too compared to that. What was it? Mm, what was see. it called? I was like some someone's game, right? To me where chess movie? What what movie was that? Uh, was it Pawn Sacrifice? Yeah, Pawn Sacrifice. And that was set in ancient Narnia. What what is that? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, it a uh, top Soviet chess grandmasters. Okay, so 1972. Okay, mm, maybe okay. I'm just I'm just trying to put him in a <laughs> pigeonhole that he didn't need to be put in. But anyway, it's yeah. it's interesting. Well, it's weird because it's weird. What stands out is that all we know him is Spider Man. So like, whenever he's not in a movie that's not that. And it's not present day. You're like, this dude only acts in like right, ancient yeah. movies. Yeah, not really. I get you. But I, you feel me, big man. You feel me. <laughs> so anyway, that's interesting. Uh, I don't know anything about that trailer, but let's do it. I'm, yeah. I'm down. Check it out. Uh, you seen this Percy Jackson and the Olympians uh, teaser? I think I have. Well, I have not, big man. I'm a <laughs> purist. All right. Yeah. He looks familiar. What do I know that actor from? I don't know. I don't. I don't recognize. You don't? I don't think so. Oh, you're tripping, Big Apple. Mm, did you ever watch the original uh, movie? Percy Jackson? Yeah. Movie. The, the first. There was just one, right? Or was there, there two? There were two. Mm, I don't think we talk about the second one. Yeah, Sea of Monsters. I don't, think we, I don't think we as a society talk about the second one. <laughs> did you yeah, see it? I, I didn't see it. I think I saw some of it, but I don't remember it. Who is this Walker Scobell? He looks very familiar. Uh, the Adam Project, if you ever saw that. Oh, He's okay. the young Ryan Reynolds uh, character. Yeah, That's that. why he looks familiar. I don't think I see that. I see, I've seen that. I don't. Yeah, I don't think you showed any interest at the time, but yeah, um, it was entertaining. I heard it was. Yeah, it was. It was. It was entertaining. That, that's another. That's another point I wanted to go back to with uh, Ryan Reynolds is that, like him or hate him, like, he's kind of like maybe this generation's uh, closest thing to perhaps Tom Cruise. Not in the like the whole spectacle I do my own stunts thing, but that like he's very good at knowing his audience and then giving them or trying to give them what they want. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. He's yeah, got, he's got that demographic locked down mm-hmm. and he knows like how to wiggle it in there and make everyone very happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So he's got that going for him. Really good producing in that, in that way. Um, but yeah, going back to this um, teaser, could be interesting. We'll see. It, I think it's supposed to be a, a, sh- a series, right? Not necessarily a movie. Yeah. It's a series. It's going to be on Disney plus. <laughs> All right, Rick and Morty Season 6, Episode 2. Let me give you the IMDb summary, summary real quick, big man. Uh, so Morty is trapped, and Rick needs to save him. But to do so, Summer must do a Die Hard 1988. This won't be easy, <laughs> because she's never seen it. Um, so, like, 
there's a lot going on, but the main the main thing is that uh, we got that machine. What is it? Uh, Roy, the Roy simulator. Yeah, the Roy game. Yeah, that is back from uh, from what, I don't know previous season two or th- three or four. Maybe? And, what's Blitz, the name? Blitz and chips. Blitz N- and chips. No, it's the arcade, right? Sh- it's Blitz and chips. No, right? no, no. It's like uh... <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? No, what else could it be? It's not blips. No blitz. No, no, it is blitz. blitz. No, 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 no. It's, it's blitz, right? Blips and chips. Is it blips and chips? Chips. No, no, it's chips. Like you eat chips. I'll put it up on screen. It doesn't matter. I'll put it up on screen. Listen. You gotta find it. (laughs) Whatever. They're back at that intergalactic arcade. And uh, everything's gone to shit. And uh, right from the gate, uh, freaking Rick is trying to save Morty, man. Trying to save him as usual. Yeah, it was fun how they they entered the episode. The cold open? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, There's kids being kids. Hey, yeah. you kids, get out of my <laughs> shop. Stop being kids. Hey. Yeah, it was all Maury's voice. It was great. I love it. When they when they do the least, that's when they're, that's when they're doing the most. I love yeah. it. Uh, dude, his lack of Jewish knowledge. When, when Marty, <laughs> yeah, when the, the smart the smart in Haven. <laughs> what do you know about? We go to the temple. They wear the hat. <laughs> um, dude, this this episode's all over the place in the best way possible. I love the um, yeah. them using this like like a uh, simulation theory to to touch into like it's not a religion like all those oh, parallels right, yeah. there's so much going on there yeah, I love that. um and <laughs> there's so many good one-liners uh and it's really just trying to convince a bunch of mortys or a bunch, a bunch of infinite pieces of him uh that you're all one you all need to work together so we can get as much as you out of this machine the simulation as possible yeah and then the um i like how there's an entire faction that is skeptical of roy roy rick roy whatever um the prophet if you would Mm-hmm. And uh, and like there's that part of Morty eight percent as we learn later that doesn't trust him or doesn't like how he treats him, right? Yeah. And we'll get into that. So it, it's cool. It's it's a nice little character analysis through all this crazy shenanigans. But I wanted to make a note, dude. Haven't you noticed the season? Like they've really taken steps uh, to improve the cinematography. Like there's some really cool, uh, like just cuts and shots and like transitions they'll do. Like most notably, remember when um towards the end of the episode when Summer's about to pull the gun out of her back and they just do that, that yeah they did look that, that arc pan. the arc shot or whatever it was when mm-hmm. it's like a 360 almost like there's a bunch of throughout the throughout these episodes there's a bunch of small shots like that that really add up I'm like man they're taking the show a little more seriously now it feels like a revival yeah. you know what I mean that's like that that's the uh, energy I get for a minute um <laughs> Marta that's interesting because that ties in later to to uh not really but to Knives Out there's a lot of Martyrs happening this week on the podcast. Because Marta is that, 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 it's the Morty, the female right, Morty. Yeah, yeah, the female yeah. Morty. Though. And that's also the lead of Nia's Out, that character's name. Marta, right? The uh, maid. Oh, right. Yeah. I thought that was I a clinky thing. Yeah. I, I gotta make, the, that's why I'm here, big. I'm gonna make <laughs> these connections for you. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, the, there's some big questions. Uh, they still, they still manage to, um, to save. I'm, I'm jumping around, but by the end of it, they save, right? He, he puts the power supply on it. He mm-hmm. lets the Marta live out the rest of her life and presumably any other bits of uh, morty that didn't trust him um but like what happens to morty for real for when we get back he just we just snip that part of his brain that doesn't trust rick out and it's like a soft re- reboot for his character or do you think he's going to come to just trust him again over time like wh- what are your thoughts on that yeah we wonder i don't i don't know quite how how that would like work for sure right the actual right. science of it yeah right? <laughs> lob- lobotomize morty <laughs> i mean but, like you would think maybe like those brain cells or mm-hmm. something would grow back and then right like like he would relearn those things but it's possible it's possible i don't know (laughs) i don't know if that's that's how it would go down i don't know either another part of me is asking the the question like i wonder how much of uh this rick is evolving because even like in uh episode one the argument can be made that he he doesn't need to save that his family but like he's keeping them around for a reason the family that he's made right yeah and so it's the same thing he goes through all the trouble of saving this morty and even though in classic Rick faction, uh, it takes a couple of generations and wars for him to finally admit that he loves and respects his son. Like they had the <laughs> argument about his grandson, yeah. like in the president's office. Um, but even then, it's still too late. So I'm like, I wonder how much Rick has evolved as a, as a result of this episode. Um, but those are just my, my, my smorgasbord of thoughts on that. How did you feel about the uh, Die Hard B plot with the summer? <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was funny. I mean, I haven't really... Have you seen Die Hard? I haven't seen... I have seen the original Die Hard. Oh, yeah. okay. So I wasn't, like, too familiar with the concept or whatever, mm-hmm. but I did I did get a lot of, like, the references that, yeah, that they... Yeah, that they put in there? Yeah, that they placed in there. <laughs> you know what's funny is that, like, it, you still basically get the gist of the movie, even though you haven't seen it. Like, right, yeah. Like, you we're both on the same page about it, because they literally did, like, the highlights of the movie, like, the classic uh-huh. things. And what they didn't show, they at least addressed at the beginning when Rick was like, 
you know, climb through some air vents. Everybody knows about that. We've seen GIFs about it. We've seen clips of it. Like it's been done to death in, mm-hmm. in modern culture, right? So we, we know all the, the basic pillars of Die Hard. And I think that was just funny. Um, so yeah, that episode worked pretty well. Um, I didn't like it as, as much the first time around because I didn't really absorb a lot of the actual jokes and jabs. Um, mm-hmm. But there was some good stuff in there. Like, uh, like I know when Rick said, uh, uh, Morty said, man, the part of me that's my father is a twat. And he's like, Rick's like, ah, that's also going to be funny when we get back. There's a couple of one-liners in there sprinkled in that it's just funny how it works in the virtual world as well as the real world. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else we got? Uh, that's pretty much it. That's that's a really good episode. Um, but there's not too much, um, I think, ideologically to sink your teeth into. Um, not until we get to episode three. <laughs> well, that gets some that gets some saucy stuff going in there, man. Let me tell you. Yeah. Um, should we talk about that real quick? Yeah. Do you have anything else on episode two before I, I take us away? No, that was it. All right, facts, facts. Okay, so the summary of episode three real quick. Um, Beth Twinstink. Uh, so the summary says Thanksgiving brings um, Thanksgiving brings Beth. Thanksgiving brings space. I can't say space Beth. It's a tongue twister, bro. <laughs> <laughs> can't say it. Thanksgiving brings space Beth home with the two Beths forming a bond. Yeah, that's putting it lightly. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of bees. That is a lot, right? Uh, Morty has the most realistic gaming console ever. I love that these uh these B plots can all, almost feel lazy because they, they just end up tying into the A plot anyway most time most of the time mm-hmm. we'll talk about that as we get into it some stray observations uh Rick <laughs> turns into again into a turkey and got them a pardon from the U S government do you think he just washes his hands every year just like yeah we do a bunch of crimes put it on the crime tab and then they get pardoned Probably, every once a year right. <laughs> yeah. that's what it feels like <laughs> um again tying into that excuse me uh into the serialization no portal gun. And again, I thought that was a nice change of pace. Yeah, like, I really, I really like that. It's a good that they're keeping device with, with uh, the consequences that come from the past episode. Right, exactly. And it, they have they're forced to be more creative, you know, somewhat, somewhat. And they have more grounded ish mm-hmm. adventures, right? Yeah, they still go to space, but it's not. Like, they can't necessarily get everywhere as dimension. fast, right? Yeah, 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 no dimensional travel, interdimensional travel, and stuff. Like they had to work really hard in, in this episode to, right? To get ice cream or what? what? Oh wait, really no, that was that. that was the first, the first, the episode. first episode. Yeah, right. where they got reset it to the original timelines. Yeah. he had to work extra hard, and he had to enlist mm-hmm. the help of both Space Beth and uh, regular Beth or whatever. And again, so like we're seeing her, like it feels like almost every other episode. Well, maybe not, but because there's only five episodes out. But like, I feel she's gonna be a bigger part of the entire narrative going forward, especially after this episode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> um, another highlight for me was uh, Jerry again is melodramatic at the top of the show about his marriage and threatens to kill himself <laughs> and like really draws yeah, out yeah. the killing himself. I'm like, <laughs> fucking crazy. hell, Jerry, what are you doing here? Um, Interesting turn, right? Like in terms of did, what? Did, did you expect like that change? Like, is that a change in, in Jerry? Or do you hmm. think that was more like I a- I feel like it was played for comedy. Like boiling over. It could have been a boiling over, but I feel like he was he was exaggerating, like for attention, is what it was. You know, like as mm. like a, like a baby might do, because oh, they've right, done right. the divorce. He, they've done yeah. the divorce arc. If well, if assuming that's the same Jerry, I know we we talk about it later. Where he gets switched from the Jerry Barry. Yeah, assuming assuming that's the same Jerry. He, they, yeah, he's yeah. Been I, the think, divorce I think route, still that and he accepted it. Well, not really greatly, but he did. You know, he had that little mm-hmm. affair rebound with the alien who was also having a rebound with him. Yeah. Remember that? Anyway, <laughs> so part of me thinks he was just doing it for the attention, as we come to learn later in the episode, more or less. But we'll get there when we get there. Um, what else? So I have a, I have a big uh, I sound like it's one of my big questions. But Beth is becoming more and more realized. Uh, well, especially both of them, but especially um, mm-hmm. Home Beth. Now that her two halves are spending more and more time together. Um, so that's like a little observation that I had. And I wonder how much of that's going to continue with normal house Beth. Like how much more is she going to join, let's say, Rick and Morty on maybe some adventures or, you know, vice versa. You know what I mean? Is she going to want to venture out from home more, you know? Right. Yeah. And um, that device at the end where they were going to uh, basically merge back into, 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 into like one Beth again. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if that's even necessary anymore. Like if or or will it be if they're just going down the same path of just basically exploring more and more of what the universe has to offer it's just something i think about i'm like mm, yeah how long can this run its course you know i don't know it's interesting i do not know big apple uh what else do i got uh <laughs> summer seeing her mom about to cheat with herself is just the perfect amount of weird and like this is also peak rick and morty i'm like dude what is this and that matching cut again back to the cinematography of her being traumatized and then like playing video games like uh-huh. that, that's that's the small things that i'm just like mm, give me that good 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 <laughs> <laughs> um uh 
Dude, did you like all the uh, background Jerry stuff, him being oblivious to everything, like playing with puzzles and like horse puzzles and like, yeah, and he's like, hey, everyone join me for the OG and that's original game. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Stupid ass. Yeah, that was funny. Did you like how Mort- uh, Morty and uh, Jerry both said vanilla when I asked what flavor of ice cream they wanted? <laughs> No, I didn't. I didn't, you didn't catch I, that. I didn't catch that. Yeah, um, when they were when the two bets were going to space for that, you know, that crazy ice cream. Oh right. Oh, is anyone any flavor requests? And they're both like vanilla. And it's just it's like a throwaway joke, but it's like, <laughs> I love it. it. Speaks to that character. That's funny, um, dude. And then they really went there with the two moms having sex, and then like Morty now knows finally, and then like yeah. Summer knows, and she's like, no, now you're into video games like I am. <laughs> now we both not know. We're not yeah, gonna talk funny. about it. I love it. I love it. And then, dude, and then Jerry having that heart attack when they both come back and he's like, what? And then, like, they think they think the, the cat's out of the bag, but no, it's just about the, her forgetting the ice cream. <laughs> I was like, what the yeah. fuck is going on? Um, <laughs> dude, it gets, it gets, it's a freaky episode. Um, but uh, I thought a cool revelation was when Rick also revealed that he's also, quote, forgotten the ice cream. Remember when they're talking code in the garage? Right, yeah. And he's like, you know, don't let it overwhelm you, whatever. You know, you start forgetting about your family, da da da. They have like a little heart to heart. Yeah, he he's seen this like infinite time, so he's, exactly. he's like aware of it all. He just basically knows it all, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I thought that was a nice little father uh, daughter moment, and to me, it kind of feels like um, Beth's or Beth are kind of like we're kind of seeing the younger version of Rick in some ways. You know, like exploring yeah. what the universe has to offer. Kind yeah, of not I think being they tied ex- down. they explained it in the uh, they like, like the, the behind the scenes thing. Yeah, the behind the scenes. After oh, what did the they episode? say? They, they they wanted to kind of look at her as a younger Rick. In that right. Way. Yeah, and I like that. She's going from being like being green about everything to kind of like mm-hmm. having her eyes wide open about everything. So it's, it's yeah. interesting. Um, also, am I tripping or did they reveal who the real Beth was? Real Beth. Oh, right. Did Space they? Beth. It was Space Beth, right? And that tracks. I, I yeah. guess it could have been either of them because either of them should have identical consciousness mm-hmm. when they were birthed or whatever in that moment when they were cloned. Right. But uh, but that's pretty fitting. Like she's like as free as she's ever been. Um, so I thought that was interesting. We got a little more. Got a piece of the puzzle solved there. Uh, what else do I have for you? We got blue. What else do I have for you? Um, dude, Rick walking in on the best, masturbating on the holodeck is golden. Like them being <laughs> old and like living their lives out in that pier. <laughs> yeah, that is really trippy. Um, this is a uh, uh, San Junipero reference. Oh yeah, from, uh, he literally called it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From what is it called? Black Mirror. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I didn't see that episode, but I am aware of the reference, and I was like, "Oh, okay." So, like, I was like, "I get it." Whatever. I didn't. I haven't seen it though. I basically saw the Black Mirror episode though. Um, <laughs> dude, I love this detail of how when they when they were drinking together, Jerry asked Rick to install that roly poly defense defense mechanism. Oh, right. They finally spilled the beans. I'm like, yeah. That is such a Jerry thing to do. <laughs> and then Rick wanted matching tattoos, and I'm like, "Seems like Rick is coming around to tolerating Jerry more." Hmm? Is this like an uneasy <laughs> coexistence they have going on? So that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, like so. kind of coming around of the family as a whole. Yeah, not like willingly, but you know, begrudgingly. Um, out of survival. Out of survival, man. <laughs> but for what? Like physical survival or emotional survival, man? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> um, Jerry also reveals when they're about to merge the two bets again that he wouldn't kill himself, but rather, um, he would rather leave than sit mm-hmm. here and see his two wives make fun of his quote tiny weird dick. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. The biggest plot twist was um, Jerry and Space Beth, Space Space Beth, realizing that Jerry wanted to permit the Beth's loves. I'm like, okay, this show is taking a fucking turn. What yeah. is going on? And essentially, like, was cucking himself with his wife, dude. It was just like his wife and his, I don't know, man. It was weird. It escalated so quickly. And then, dude, the poor kids. Yeah, the they table, all had to listen. They all had to just listen. All to because they didn't have portal food. Oh, because they didn't have portal food. So Marty was pouring like a mountain of salt on his food. Yeah. Was like, no. Dude, I was just as uncomfortable as they were. And also, this is kind of weird, but I counted the seconds from when they pulled Jerry into the session <laughs> to when he finished. 45 seconds. Stay strong, Jerry. <laughs> Stay strong. So I was like, dude, this is crazy. I don't know. This episode was really, to me, is as wild and crazy as it was. Like I was, it was firing in a lot, like all of the right cylinders. Like yeah, it was really for sure. Yeah, what, what did you, what drew you uh, the most about it? Like what, what stood out the well, most? Well, just uh, like the the Jerry stuff, like how, how um, they were uh, going back to his his backstory in college. I forgot to mention that, or yeah, in uh, high in high school. school. Yeah, when he first wanted to ask out Beth. Right, and right? he got warned about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think that was the exact moment 
he knew he wanted her or do you think he'd been thinking about it for a while and then just decided in that moment like he's like no i'm gonna go for her probably, i mean he's probably thought about it a for a minute right that, yeah I just thought that despite all the warning signs, he was like, no, nah, I'm going for it. Yeah. And he did. <laughs> and I was like, damn, okay, good for you, Jerry. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was that was a nice bit of backstory because we don't we didn't really know mm-hmm. much about them back in those days. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's really cool how they're doing that with with uh, every episode now. They're kind of they're they're branching out. They're not just sticking to mm. um uh, the Rick and Morty stories, yeah. just them traveling and I feel like um even from like season one, they've always kind of had like like some. They've dabbled in their yeah. marriage and like them as a B plot. But yeah, I do like how like what you said. They're expanding upon it and they're like you know mm-hmm. getting deeper with it. That's always been really cool. God, they are so smug after when they're seeing Space Beth off and like the, the family's like, oh God, no, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this has got to be the raunchiest episode yet, and it works in all the right ways. Uh, there's a lot to tie into old stuff and it explores further plot points. And um, I don't know, it's like what's next for Space Beth? Uh, to me, it feels like they. They could have her die doing something like epic during like maybe one of the season finales, you know, mm. the upcoming ones. Yeah, yeah. Because that goes back to my early question. It's like how long, if both of them can be fully realized like this, you know what I mean? Or like move towards that. Mm-hmm. Do they both really need to exist? You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. It's just questions. Just thoughts, man. Just thoughts. Sounds like Blade Runner. Sounds like Blade Runner. <laughs> Sounds like Blade Runner. But yeah, there's, there's lots to love in this episode. This is probably one of my favorites of the season just because it's like it's just really good start to finish. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. Um, you got anything else on this episode, big man? No, nah, that's it. All right, my brother. We'll take a quick break and we'll get into that Knives Out review. Yeah. I right, feel you. Okay, well, we're back with our review of Knives Out. Uh, let's get it right into it with the director and writer, Ryan Johnson. Uh, you've seen his previous stuff, Big, ba- big Apple? Uh, he did the second of the new trilogy of Star Wars. Oh, right? that's why uh, I remember the name. So he was episode seven or eight? No, seven. I don't know how to count. S- Seven, eight, eight, nine. Eight. eight. It was eight, right? No. Yeah, it was. Seven, eight, yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven, eight. Because they nine. do them in threes. They do. Yeah. Yeah. So he ruined the franchise. Got it. All right. And then, I uh, thought it was the better of the two. Or three, as a standalone? Maybe as, as like a, a standalone. Okay. But also, I didn't like the B plot. So. Mm. We have notes for you, Ryan. It's okay. We'll get into it later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, star- <laughs> the Knives Out stars Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Ana de Armas, is, and many others that I'm not going to get into right now. But yeah. the overall plot is um, this. When renowned crime novelist Harlan Thrombey, Christopher Plummer, is found dead at his estate just after his 85th birthday, the inquisitive and debonair, debonair detective ben- Benoit Blanc, which, no, <laughs> Daniel Craig, is mysteriously enlisted to investigate. Uh, from Harlan's dysfunctional family to his devoted staff, Blanc sifts through a web of red herrings and self-serving lies to uncover the truth behind Harlan's untimely death. Ain't that a mouthful? Um, but that pretty much captures it, mostly. Uh, my initial thoughts were that I knew nothing about this film, other than I heard it was like a murder mystery of sorts. Mm. And um, what did you have any initial thoughts before you first saw it? Or you just knew nothing about it as well? Um, well, I knew, I knew it was a murder mystery, and I had seen the trailer. Oh, you had? Okay. I hadn't seen the trailer. Not that I can remember. I'm sure maybe I saw like a TV spot for it, but I was like, this Mm. doesn't tell me anything. Not really. Yeah. Um, so I it it's not in memory. Um, but I right off the bat, man, like I just kind of have like an assortment of observations. And I gotta say, I really like how the tone was set from like jump. I mean, the house has like a lot of character. Like this is an estate. This is not a home. This is an estate. Like like, (laughs) this is really grand. And um a lot of windows, a lot of a lot of um it's very densely decorated like it's mm-hmm. not sparse at all it's got a lot of character a lot of books a lot of trinkets a lot of furniture um it's very very nice i really love the set design um and i love how that the comedic tone was right there from jump as well like i think it's like a was it a family member or was it a maid that came in and found uh mr Thar- the old man yeah 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 the old dude he, he found uh, him dead yeah i she, think like, dropped it was. Her food and shit i mm-hmm. feel like it was like a, a family member is the Anadara Masa's Marta wasn't there. She wasn't because she yeah, knows no, what happened. It wasn't her. So it, it was that it was that um sketchy family member. I think it was that older, uh, not the older older lady, but like the middle aged lady, who like clutches her pearls. Was it the be, one who got that, poisoned at the end? Spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. It was her. I think it was her. It looked just like her. You can you can confirm that, but I'm pretty sure it's her. And I was like, ooh, it's gonna be a who done it. And I was like, let's go. And I really really like that they are all skeptical of the uh, the quote unquote help. Marta, like when they're all kind of reconvening just after the funeral and they're catching up with each other and they're like, oh, you know, you're so good to her, blah, 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 all <laughs> little false little 
sweet nothings you know what i mean right yeah and bro um right from jump like that whole 30 minute interrogation scene where we're like we're like peeling the onion you know so to speak mm-hmm. um about what happened and like who was where and what and like why are we getting in- interviewed you know what i mean why are we being interrogated real quick um and then finally daniel craig's like little subtle appearance with that piano I'm like what is going on with that like why was he <laughs> what, what did yeah, you think he was, was going on with that? It was like Dink. what was that like <laughs> speed it up or what, what was with that entrance when he started doing that to a couple of characters uh yeah i think i think he wanted to interject at that point is that what it was yeah probably. Like, here's my entrance Bing. <laughs> it was interesting it worked but i was like who the fuck is that on the piano what is this what is this shit <laughs> bro i was not ready for that southern accent how did you feel about that big man uh How'd it was a it? unique choice i don't mm-hmm. i don't know if it makes sense for the character but I, I, I name think like it that. Worked. Like, like it was I feel like from the bayou you know a benoit blanc Kentucky Fried, <laughs> Gator Roast. Right, yeah. Like he has a French name, so like, yeah, why is for sure Louisiana? It has to be. But was it? Is it like? Is that what his accent? His accent sounded like. I feel like that's what it was going for. I mean, like it was. It was like it had that drawl. That Cause, southern. Cause, uh, Chris. Uh, Chris. Uh, Evans. Yeah, Chris Evans. I think Chris Evans with. Uh, Chris Evans' character uh, called him. KFC, KS or CSI. Yeah, exactly. Which was yeah. funny. That was a great line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right, but the Kentucky Kentucky Fried Chicken is the brand. Right. The Colonel Sanders has that that like that draw, that Southern draw, like like he could right, be from Louisiana, right. like from the Bayou. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's why. I mean, he there's that. there's more Colonel than Colonel Sanders. There's more than just Louisiana for his Southern accents. But. Southern accents, but with the French last name and that culture. Right, but. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, that's like what I'm shouldn't he have more of like a Cajun accent? Yeah, maybe rather than Southern. Well, to me, it sounded like a little. I don't know. It sounded like a little. I know, think it was funny. It was inten- I mean, it was entertaining. Words, but yeah, but here I'm not here to break down his, <laughs> his, his background again. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah, just here to say yeah, the accent me. was funny. All right, <laughs> <laughs> and I love that he was baiting that um that older white lady, and she was like, "I'm not falling for that. I have rights or whatever, <laughs> whatever she said. <laughs> that was golden." Um, let me get this uh, IMDb pulled up for uh. There's so many names, man. It is packed. It is like a clue game, and they even call that out at some point. Yep. So I love that, and that's that's another thing I liked about this movie is it was very self aware, but it still managed to do something pretty refreshing even with that information. You feel me, big man? Yeah. So um, let me just pull it up real quick, and I'll continue making my points about why this movie is so much fun. I can't find the image of the of that scene. No, it's fine. I mean, like, uh, I'm sure I could find it later. But yeah. the, the act, she, the character was Fran. Remember Fran? Fran oh, was yeah. the lady that walked in on, on Thromby, and she was the one who got poisoned at the end. That Eddie okay. Patterson is the name of the actress. Oh yeah, Eddie yeah. Patterson. So that's that's her for sure, no doubt. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, let's see what else we got going on this year. Mm, yeah, so fairs, dude. I love how they set up um old man Thromby or whatever having <laughs> beef with everybody. That always makes a good whodunit because then everyone has kind of like probable cause for murdering. Her. Right, right. Like I'm cutting you all off. No one's getting a dime. That whole thing. Really convenient that <laughs> that it happened around here. There's a lot of conveniences in this movie, but I forgive them because it makes for fun a fun plot. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, yeah. Uh, dude, I think the the speaking of convenience, the biggest convenience is that Marta has an allergy to lying, bro. Like a plot <laughs> device. Come yeah, on, that was man. funny. <laughs> she's like, she's so overwhelmingly good. Come on, man. Like, but it was funny though. The pukes. Oh my god, they got me. He's like, dear God, I thought she was speaking speaking figuratively. <laughs> I was like, oh my yeah. god, what are we doing right now? What is this movie? <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun. Um, dude, the anonymous hiring of Blanc, uh, as mysterious as that was, I could not. Until we get the actual reveal at the end, I could not put my finger on who would do that and why. Yeah. And uh, did you feel like it was telling? Cause again, spoilers. Like, did you feel like it was telling at the end that we didn't see a lot of Chris Evans' character at the, at the top because he had something major to do with it? Or I, I feel like that that's what hinders the the mystery itself is that like why aren't we kinda, seeing him? Yeah, they kind of put him like toward the end of the movie. Right. Right. So I mean, maybe not in terms of like figuring out that that he's the villain, but I, I think it, it takes away from the story itself. Like sure. It definitely feels like... How it all meshes. Speaking on that note, how it meshes, it definitely feels like a really long short film and then the actual Knives Out movie kicks into gear after we got all that crazy yeah. exposition out of the way. And yeah, Because like, yeah. I really felt like after that whole uh, interview thing and like how it kind of end caps with um, Marta, like we find out through her eyes that we feel like, okay, she killed him. She switched it up, whatever. She killed him indirectly. 
they had that whole elaborate plan because he's an amazing story writer and he's thought mm -hmm. about something like this or can imagine it on the fly like that um, of how she can get away scot-free and whatever. And that's it. We're just like, oh, okay, she did it. Like, I mean, that's what I was believing by that, by that point in the movie. And I was like, so why right. is there like an hour and something left in this movie? What's going on here? <laughs> you know what I mean? So then the movie kicks in again. I thought that was interesting. Um, did you feel like the circle of knives, that set design, do you feel like that was uh, too on the nose and too intentional, like too artsy for the movie? Or did you think it worked in the larger, larger oh. scope of the film? I think it worked as, like, to set the the tone of, yeah, yeah, to to help set the tone of the the movie because mm -hmm. a lot of the characters were like brash and bold and had like a strong personality to them. So, yeah, and they were um, kind of being put on trial, right? Like, like yeah. as they were sat there and like yeah, yeah. In, in, interrogated, basically. Yeah, so it know? sets. It, I think it helped set the scene. Yeah, it definitely made it more like, and uh, and also it was it was util, utilized at the end. Very well, uh, very well. With that little prop, yeah, yeah. That was did not expect that again. <laughs> again, it, that leads me back to that whole point. It's like, dude, this movie like has it, it employs comedy so well. Like, it's just really great. Like in little odds and ends, like not just like lines and stuff, but like you know, visual gags, like the grandma like not being like being super confused and just out of it. Right. Yeah. You just know what I mean, quiet just like, the whole right, time, just, like, <laughs> not staring, all there. Just staring through the window. Is that your grandson? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is wrong with this lady? <laughs> it's just obscenely old. But it, it ended up, she wasn't crazy. She did see what she saw. You know yep. what I mean? There we go. Um, another, another fun thing is like, I like all the, the entitled jabbing at uh, Marta. Like, oh, you know, I would have loved to have you at the funeral, but I was outvoted. <laughs> By who? Who right. voted? I, like, I feel like everyone who talks to her says that. Like, who, who are these votes? <laughs> did the Nazi grandson vote like 20 times? Like, what happened? <laughs> right. That was interesting. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, did you like the way the dogs were employed in the in the movie? I thought that was interesting, and I, I really liked how. Oh yeah, how like they they would bark at certain certain, certain people, people and, and and they kind yeah. of they made you they made you pay attention to that too because even uh, Mr. Blanc went out of his way to be like, oh, I've always found dogs you're a great judge of character and all. Right. That. So I was like, uh, you would include that line if we didn't have to pay attention. To that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You start putting your detective hat on when you watch this movie, and I like that shit. Um. Evan's telling the whole family to eat shit is good. Did you like when he came back when they were reading the will? And that whole scene just goes to shit. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Dude, Michael Shannon kills it, man. It's yeah, like, he, he's he was killing great this the way shit. that he just escalated and escalated. Fucking loved it. Yeah. He was like, fucking, he wants more biscuits. <laughs> yeah. I fucking love it. I love this movie, dude. It's so much fun. Um, yeah, the family went ape shit, man. Uh, especially when they read the actual will and everything goes to Marta. Mm -hmm. What was that twist about? What was that about? Mm. Was that just for convenience, or do you think the old man really liked her enough to think she deserved all that? You know what I mean? I mean, that's what they you know, I would have liked to have a, a have reason. had a scene that showed like why it, he would think that. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I get like his decision process for, yeah. for doing that. Um, like we're told, but yeah, I, I mean, she was the most wholesome character out of all for sure. So that's by design. If it was gonna sure. go to somebody, it would go to her rightfully. I do like the part where um, it was after she decided, with the help of uh, Evan's character, of course, um, that she was going to keep the money. And I think Michael Shannon is harassing her. Mm -hmm. But she kind of, I don't want to say gets drunk on power, but she kind of seems tempted by it. She's like, well, if I have all this and you have all these resources yeah. and these lawyers, well, then <laughs> I can afford these lawyers and I can do it. And like she's getting kind of bold and brash herself. Right, because those resources that he's referring to are now hers. Are now hers, exactly. And uh, while that's true, I, I just think it's interesting how like it's, the movie kind of has an underlying like theme or tone where it's like, well, mm -hmm. money kind of can corrupt people really easily, especially when you have that much of it. I think his assets were like in the millions, multi millions, like almost hundreds of millions, maybe if not like yeah. So it's 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 a substantial sum. So I just love how it makes, it makes everyone go crazy and like just lose their their sanity. <laughs> but how how sane were they before that? Really, you know, this family. <laughs> um, pretty messed up family. Pretty so. messed up family. <laughs> I don't know. Um, some other random observations I have. Um, Bro, Evans really played Marta, man. I mean, he had this whole elaborate thing. With yeah. Like anonymous hiring and how um how uh Blanc was somehow connected to the family. Remember they had that whole bit about the backstory where like he had worked with perhaps um was it like he worked with the old man or something? They, like some old deputy connections. He had some weird tie into the family oh, like, right. related to the law. Yeah. I don't remember the specifics, but I'm like, that's kind of convenient. Like they have like a <laughs> We have an old history, old past. And if that's true, why would he call the most qualified person to solve the case? 
and ha- and assume he's not gonna find out the real perpetrator. <laughs> I don't know. It was yeah, it's pretty arrogant of, of him. Yeah, and it got confusing as well with the whole the switcheroo about the switcheroo. You know how like the vial wasn't the right vial because the labels were changed, right? But uh, but then they were the right well, vials because Marta's Marta, just such a great nurse. I was like, okay, that's a little bit. I don't know. I think I think that could kind of make it kind of work. I mean, if they've really done so many, like sure, if yeah. she's done like thousands of ejections, sure, right. But it to me, it just I mean, if the discosity is like that different, yeah, yeah, enough. That's true. But it felt like she felt very distracted when she was doing it. But maybe she's mm-hmm. it's like nothing. It's like you know on autopilot. So yeah. there was enough like probable like I guess doubt you could say. So I was just confused. I was like, what, <laughs> what is the truth? What really happened here? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, con- contrivances for sure. For sure, for sure, no doubt. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of great things in this in this film, and I won't go through every little thing, but. Uh, <laughs> But I, I did like a lot of it. And uh, yeah. they kind of cleaned up some of the, the the little bit of the plots, like the husband cheating plot at the end. Like she gets to punch him or whatever. <laughs> like you see like the thing. <laughs> right. But dude, it was powerful when she came out and like sipping that, that very cup in the beginning, the my house, my rules, whatever, mm-hmm. eat shit, whatever the cup said. <laughs> and she was like looking over them and then they're just kind of like looking up like, oh, fuck, I guess that's her place now. Like that was, that was yep. kind of cool. I like that whole role reversal towards the end. <laughs> um, you know, believe it or not, I have some, uh, I have some dislikes. Okay. Let's get into that real quick. Mm. Why did this man have to quote Hamilton? That was so forced and just nasty. <laughs> I did, he did not need to do that. Just leave it. Leave it in New York, buddy. Don't. You don't have to. Do it's that. it's interesting though because of how many references there are to modern culture. That, right. Um. Like I I don't know that there's any other movie to date that that's done that. Like as there. many references or yeah, in like general? as or as like these specific references. Oh, I, I, I haven't seen. That's, that's a good point. And another thing that makes them kind of stand out in an interesting way is that it is a quote unquote modern movie, mm-hmm. but because of the nature of the movie and the setting and what everyone's right, wearing, right. it feels pretty like it could be like almost any decade in the last three or four decades, mm-hmm. more or less. You know what I mean? With the exception of like smartphones, whatever. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so that clue just has that old timey feel to it, you know? Also, the, going back to contrivances, dude, I don't know if that little magnet was enough to erase a, erase a VHS tape. In the small amount of time <laughs> she was rubbing a fridge magnet on it, I was like, eh, "Yeah, yeah, really? okay." And um, dude, I really thought, I really thought Franz died. That's her name, right? Was it Franz? Yeah, but uh, yeah. Well, no, she did die. She did, right? Or didn't she? The, yeah, they. She oh, played she a switch. It was Marta, Marta yeah. was on the phone and said she lived. Yeah, and said she lived. He's like, "What do you got? She attempted murder." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nah, she dead. You killed her. <laughs> Gotcha. Yep. And then that's when he goes to stab her. I was like, that's crazy. She made him confess. Like, out of everyone, like, I thought maybe Tommy would have gotten that out of her, but she's wise enough to the tricks and turns for the last couple of days that she got it. And that's about it. Um, you want to hear some trivia real quick, Big Apple? Yeah. Just you a got little some? bit. Just a little trivia for you, man. What she got? Did you know that? And I want to hear your thoughts on this. Ryan Johnson contemplated cutting Blanc's donut speech, but Craig convinced him <laughs> that it was good. I'm just gonna stop you there. What did you feel? How did you feel about that donut monologue, dude? I liked it. Liked it? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was. It hurt my like, head. <laughs> like stupidly, like it kind of worked though. Like it unique. was so dumb, it worked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was just like lost. I was like, what the fuck, donut hole within a donut hole. <laughs> just everywhere, everything <laughs> bagel out of my fucking face right now, man. Get that out of my face. Um, but yeah, he he did he delivered the shit out of that monologue. Like he believed. It, yeah, so no, he did. I was like, all right, all right, all right, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. <laughs> but I will say that made my head hurt. I was like, fuck me. Um, here's another one, man. Um, so we know about the sequel, you know, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery was announced. Um, and of course you told me like last time the only relationship uh, relation to this film is Benoit Blanc. He's just going to be working right. on the next mystery. Yeah. Um, so that comes out uh, in theaters soon, quote unquote, and also globally on Netflix on the 23rd. Uh, what most people don't know is that there was also a third movie also ordered for Netflix. So I just kind of wanted to throw that in there as well. So they ordered, oh, okay. they ordered two. Yeah. So there's a third one in production, apparently. Well, it will be after this shortly, but it's in, it's, you know, it's in, it's in the plans, man. They're going to make it. They're going to make it. Do you know if they're producing it already? Um, I don't know if, how, how deep into pre-production, if any, they are. Uh, but I do know there's plans for it. So he's got to have at least like a lease or a loose idea of what it's going to be. Maybe the setting. Maybe mm-hmm. he has some stars in mind since they're throwing enough money at him to kind of get whoever he wants. I mean, the second one's pretty stacked, too. Yeah, it is. You know, we, we got like Dave Bautista and I think um, Ethan Hawke, among others, too. I don't remember everyone. Yep. Um, Edward Norton. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Just all these people all of a sudden. <laughs> so I was like, that's interesting. 
another another bit of trivia is that Ryan Johnson Ryan Johnson acknowledges that despite numerous edits and attempts to shave it down, the script's opening interrogation sequence, complete with flashbacks edited in, was always quote uh, a really tough read. He would have people read it and then get the same note. He never didn't get the note that boy, those first thirty pages are rough, and then it kicks into gear. I didn't. Maybe reading it is rough, but man, watching it was a delight. I mean, maybe we got a really edited down version of what it was, even mm. if it's just twenty or thirty percent. But I mean, it was fun. It was like, what happened? And who did what? And what are these relationships? Like, did yeah. did you feel the same way, or how did you feel about that? Like, thirty minute exposition. I could see how it'd be hard reading it, just because there's a lot of like, like small like switches and like. Now we have to be somewhere else. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. I'm so sure I, I, can, I could see, I could see that. I mean, it is a mystery. Um, what were you asking? No, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> when you watched it, did you you didn't mind it? Like, did it fly by for you, or did it feel like? Oh no, yeah, like it end? was. I think it was a solid pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, liked it. I mean, it did feel like two different movies, almost. I agree. I agree. But like two different acts. Very different acts. Like, um, a little bit act one and then back yeah, act two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like once Chris Evans was introduced, it just became a different, Entirely. different movie. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. It certainly did. I agree. Um, but yeah, I think the first third of, of, this is my final thoughts. I think the first third of this movie felt like a short film, like I said earlier. Mm-hmm. And it really could have just ended with us finding out that Marta killed him on accident, but it didn't. And so I was like, okay. I had no expectations going into this, and I was really delighted with a lot of the twists and turns, you know, contrivances aside. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, murder mysteries are back, the Big Apple. They're back. <laughs> yeah. And I'm happy, uh, I'm happy Ryan Johnson is at the helm. Hopefully he can uh, maintain the same energy going forward. You know what I mean? Yeah, supposedly Glass Inn is supposed to be better than this one. <sighs> so. Nah, you can't be talking all that shit, Big A. <laughs> I don't know, that. man. I haven't seen it myself. Shit. I think this is a 10 out of 10 for the genre, and I really enjoyed it. And yeah. uh, you know, you don't have to think that, but I do. I, I, then again, I don't watch like every murder mystery ever. So no, I mean, I don't either. No, but no. but I really liked it for the genre. I was like, this was fun. Yeah. Like, it was just pure entertainment. Like mm-hmm. I, and I really appreciated that. So that's what my thoughts on it. What do you, what are your final thoughts on the movie Big Apple? Give me them. Give me. Let me. Let me, uh, let me nibble on this shit. I mean, yeah, I I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. You got a rating for it, Big A? I I give it like a I don't know an eight. An eight. Okay. Yeah. All right. You weren't in love with it. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I really liked it. I really liked it. Uh, you don't have to be but uh yeah definitely recommend it if you haven't seen it why are you watching this and <laughs> i'm just kidding and uh that's our review of knives out um that's all i got for today big apple so i'm gonna sign off all right I'm, Matthew. And I'm Asian. we're gonna catch you next time